Christ will not repent. The last, for those of you who have come uh, yesterday, we've been doing a bit of history lesson from India. Um, just for the sake of what I think is some basic education that devotees should have about the place from which our tradition, historically speaking, has come. Uh, and we were talking about different layers of history, and we talked about lasagna, didn't we? I don't want to repeat everything, and so I'm going to... Now what I think I'll do is jump, make a huge jump from the past to the recent, from the ancient past to the recent past. Uh, let's see, where do we want to go? Yeah, India encounters Europe. Uh, we talked about one layer of what we call the Indo-Anglian layer. In other words, Indian English. In other words, the time when uh, first Europeans in general and then eventually uh, uh, the British became the power in what we now call India. And that started, well, one date to sort of peg, peg it on was 1757-58, the time uh, when there was a battle called the Battle of Plasse, P-L-A-S-S-E-Y, which is somewhere in Bengal, West, I think West Bengal, somewhere north of Calcutta, there was a battle, and uh, the British um, at that time, company soldiers. It was no. It was not yet the British military as such, but it was um, the East India Company. And by this time, they had a small army uh, to promote their purposes. They won this battle, and from that time up until 1947. Uh, the British more or less ruled more or less of India. Um, let me see now. What do I want to talk about? Okay, let's go with this. Uh, okay. Now, some of this might be a kind of boring. I hope it's not boring. But <laughs> Actually, history is boring unless you can connect it to the present. History is really boring if you feel like it has nothing to do with yourself in the present. So the challenge of a history is to make the connection, and then when you see the connection, you go, oh, wow, that's actually interesting. <laughs> because you see something of your own background. That's my little theory. Um, when, the, when the Europeans came to India, of course that goes back uh, to the time around when Lord Chaitanya was, uh, in, was, was, uh, was, was living, was manifest, was living in India, was traveling, was preaching, the chanting of the Holy Name. Around that time, uh, Europeans were coming to India with mainly motivation of uh, of seeking economic development. And then from that time, from um, already 15th century up through 16th, 17th, they were establishing um, business in, in, in trade in India. Now these people who were coming from Europe also had their own history, their own culture, their own uh, 
misconceptions, their own misconceptions, whatever you want to call it, their own, um, uh, yeah, we might want to classify in terms of modes of nature or whatever. But the main point I want to make is they also had a kind of multi-layered um, consciousness behind them. They had their own you know, layers of history, all of which they were dealing with and sort of bringing their, um, let's say, social and political and cultural issues with them. We say in English, they were bringing their own cultural baggage with them. Uh, so part of this baggage can be sort of uh, identified with some of the terms which historians typically use. And one of these is the Renaissance, uh, sometimes called the Italian Renaissance, which they give different dates for, but for our purposes we can say from uh, the 15th century. And one of the interesting things that happened, that developed uh, during this time, was a technical innovation. And this technical innovation was a movable type, the printing press. Or we can say movable type, which made the printing press possible. The idea that you can, you know, make in relief. Uh, a, and it's, you can put that next to a, uh, whatever, some other letter, and another, and another, and you can make a word, and make a sentence, and so on. You can make, out of all of that, along with technology of making paper, you can start making books. And all of this, uh, I think, is quite relevant for the Sankirtan movement, because we, in the Hare Krishna movement, in case you haven't noticed, put a lot of emphasis on books. And basically, we still do it. The technology has changed, it's become much more sophisticated, um, but in some respects, it's still the same. It's, it's about taking a piece of paper and imprinting uh, some ink uh, on that paper. Mm. So that was happening in the Renaissance. Religiously, there was all kinds of very intense... There was great intensity. Uh, intense conflict, there was war in Europe, uh, religious war, right? Uh, you all had your, your you, you already had much of this in school, um, so I don't want to give you bad associations, oh, we heard all this in school. It was so painful, you know, to learn all these uh, dates and names. And that. I've purposely forgotten them all. <laughs> but uh, my point here is that the, the people who were coming to India were bringing uh, the issues that were there in what's come to be called the Reformation with them. Uh, the Reformation, if we put a date on that, uh, maybe what when Martin Luther uh, uh, posted his his list of complaints against the Roman Catholic Church. What was that? Fifteen twenty. Fifteen twenty, I think. In uh, where was that? That was in Deutschland. Not in Weimar. It was. Huh? Wittenberg, yes, 